Okay, I am joined by Anna uh, this morning. So I'm just checking is it afternoon or morning, but it is this morning um, from Tarbo Imports. So Anna, I'll hand over to you if you'd like to tell us um, about your business, what it is you do and how long you've been running the company for. Yeah, of course. So um, we started Tarbo um, actually just before the very first lockdown is when we first incorporated. Oh, wow. Um, Tarbo is... Uh, brainchild of mine and my partners um it stems from both of us have quite a love of cars mm -hmm. and we wanted to see if we could do turn our passions into a job basically yeah uh, so um if we'd have known about covid in hindsight we probably would have waited a little bit sure. <laughs> uh, but yeah that's basically what it is so we import uh japanese cars um, to the UK, we can import them worldwide as well, depending on the country. Um, we get the car road ready for people, so we import to spec for clients. So they'll come to us and say, "I'm looking for whatever it is that they want, a skyline." And we say, "Does your budget fit the car?" Um, and then, yeah, we search the Japanese auctions for them. We try to match the spec of the car to the client. So if they want something very specific, like certain modifications or certain colours or certain spec, that kind of thing. Um, as long as obviously the budget is right, um, we'll try to aim to get exactly what they want for them. Um, we'll bring it over, we arrange all of the shipping, arrange all of the, uh, the logistics for them, uh, get it registered over here with the DVLA and then polish it and basically they come down and pick up their beautiful car. Yeah, I feel <laughs> like this is a, a TV programme I've seen or something. <laughs> yeah, it's yeah. basically, we, we work as a, we do have a dealer side to our business as well where we bring over cars for ourselves prep them and then we'll sell them on in the UK but the agency side is the one where we import to spec for clients. Awesome so how does that I mean do you have global clients do people come to you just from the UK as well or? Um, predominantly because uh, we're UK based most yeah. of our clients are in the UK we have shipped cars to Antigua we've done a few um, in Spain and Portugal so we can ship worldwide Brexit sort of um, made uh, EU shipping a little bit more difficult mm. um we do a lot of stuff with Ireland as well um we get a lot of cars so again Ireland's a little bit tricky to import into so people come to us to help part of using an agency as well is that it isn't necessarily difficult buying a car from the auctions in Japan but it's the logistics after that getting it on a boat and then the registration process yeah as much as you know we have to work with a dvla they can be a little bit difficult and they're really like uh outdated in the way that being everything's still paper everything has to be posted yeah filled out that kind of thing so it can be like quite a laborious task and it's very confusing and yeah. the DVLA are not the most helpful at times i can appreciate that yeah, yeah. so sometimes <laughs> it's just easier to just get an agency to do it and then you yes. know that it ticks all the boxes and you've got mm -hmm. exactly what you wanted um Another big part of a reason of using an agency like us as well is that we actually have a team in Japan. So when clients bid on cars in auction, um, our team flagged that they have to go inspect the car. Um, they will physically go to the auction lot, turn the car over, look for rust, you know, sure. or it's the standard kind of things. Again, um, we import cars to spec for clients. So if a client wants a project, and they can deal with things themselves, like a little bit of rust or, you know, oil leaks. We will specifically say to our team, a little bit of rust here is fine, but okay. no rust in the seals, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. So it's very, very specific what we can do. Um, and that's one of the main reasons. A lot of times uh, when people buy from Japan, they buy just off of the auction sheet. So okay. every car has... Um, an auction seat essentially that comes with the car which they're given a grade and they're given notes about the car mm -hmm. but depending on the auction house you use and the inspector grades are sort of yeah not that trustworthy or yeah, yeah. It's, a, it's a basic guideline but high value cars tend to be a bit more loosey-goosey with the grading mm -hmm. um so again a part of using an agency like us is that we can actually go and see the car in person we can inspect it our team can sometimes take photos and send them to us so we can send them to the client and say oh, that's great yeah, are you okay with this level of rust or is that a bit too much? If it's too much, then we'll skip it and we'll just keep looking. Mm. 
how much rust converter are you willing to put on? <laughs> yeah, like, well, we, like I say, we import we import to spec. So we we work with clients who want show cars. They want garage creams. They want yeah. you know the super rare collectible cars. Yes. But we also work with loads of guys who are mechanics. They run their garages. You know they can fix things themselves. So they yeah. don't want really to pay top bang for a shiny car. And they're like, yeah, I can you know I can mm-hmm. weld. I'll take that out. So we're quite open with who we work with. So I think, again, that's one of the benefits of using somebody like us is that we don't, you know, we, we try to be as helpful as we can and we will try yeah. to fit the car to the person. Mm-hmm. Awesome. And then do you have a, a garage here in Cornwall, which you work from, which sort of has has your cars in and that's where you invite people down to come and look once they've been imported? Yep. So we yeah. have a little unit down in Newquay on Crantop Street. Um, uh, yeah. We also work with um, a garage in St Agnes. So the garage does our um, labour side of it. Yeah. We do more of the aftercare side in our unit. The day unit's not massive. Um, so we do the after prep work, like the interior detailing, ceramic sure. coating, these kind of things. And then, yeah, the garage in St Agnes do all of the actual manual labour side, like pop it for MOT, but we arrange it for it. Yeah, of course. Yeah. <laughs> So you sort of take that, that's part of the journey for your customers yeah. that it's all taken care of in-house. Yeah, so we have different service packages for clients as well, again, which helps people who are maybe working on a tighter budget. Yeah, of course. Um, so we can say to them, we can give you a basic package where we just do a fog light conversion and just get it on the road for you with an MOT. Or we can give it, you know, the full works. We can ceramic coat it. We can detail it for you. We've had clients send us down body parts to apply for them. So they'll ship them down to us so that when the car's picked up, everything is done. They don't have to do anything. Yep. But given the different packages, it just allows people to have that little bit of flexibility. And again, I call it a pick and mix, which I shouldn't really do. But sometimes people say, I want this, but I also want just these two little things. You yeah. Know? just want the underseal bolted on can we do that so we tend to you know be quite lenient with what people can and can't do yeah of course i'm sure that's highly appreciated as well because it's just if you know there's a reason they've asked so absolutely yeah fantastic and then how big is your team so you said it's yourself and your partner do you have any other people that work in the garage no it is just me and my partner everybody else that we work with is pretty much like a, we have like a partnership model sure. so we work with um, the garage we have the team in japan obviously they're quite big um but directly in the uk it's just me and my partner who do it so i do pretty much i don't want to say everything <laughs> <laughs> say it <laughs> yeah. um, i do uh pretty much the full operational side of it so i do all the clients all the logistics all of the partnership management Whereas uh, my partner is really good on the labour end. He's the one who likes to get dirty. He will yep. polish that engine up. He will, you know, get rid of those. If there's rust, he'll get rid of the rust for you. He will detail awesome. it. He will, you know, it will be absolutely spick and span when it's picked up. But I tend to be more client facing. <laughs> of course. It sounds like you're both very hands on, though. So that's good. You oh, must yeah. Understand. We, we dabble in both. Yeah. Um, I'm pretty good with the old buffer yeah (laughs) (laughs) um but yeah we do we do mix and match it's just out of convenience because we have children as well so I tend to be able to be a bit more flexible with my side of things Mm -hmm. yeah fantastic and then have you always um have you both always been your own bosses or were you employees beforehand or no so I've done um Oh, my goodness. My work history is uh, a riot. I've worked in offices. Yeah. Um, I used to be a marketing account director, um, a carer. I've been a postman. Oh, wow. Some, <laughs> a lot of office work. Uh, Dom has uh, in IT. He's a cloud architect. Yeah. Um, so we've got very, yeah, obscure work histories and Tarbo is basically built from hobby that's turned yeah. into fashion that turned into like let's try and give it a go. Yeah. So yeah. What would you what would you say to anyone that was thinking about starting their business or going for it then? You never know unless you try. Yeah. I think there's there's never going to be a right time. Like I said for us, um if we'd have known that COVID was going to hit for two years and then we'd go into a recession, we probably would have rethought or delaying the incorporation. But yeah. we would never have known how it would have gone until until you try and yeah like we've had many many failures on certain things and it is just it's a wild learning curve 
And no matter how good you think you're doing, something will crop up, uh, crop up and you'll go, oh, oh no. Um, yeah. You just have to roll with the punches. And it can, mm. it can be really, really disheartening. But then also when, like, you know, one thing I'm really, really proud of is our reviews. Because my role is so client-facing and because my background is in office work and I've come from a very corporate background and I'm not a very corporate person, yeah. I'm way more laid back. So our reviews reflect that. Every single review we've got is five star and it's always around the customer service. Yeah. Always that we're on point, we're really friendly, we're really down to earth. And you know, there are hundreds of important agencies out there, but we do pride ourselves on our level of customer service. We mm-hmm. tend to use WhatsApp because people have it, it's so readily yeah. available. We don't work nine to five. If you want to ring me up at eight o'clock in the evening and go, I've seen this, what do I do? <laughs> That's fine. Yeah. We're always around and, you know, and if, like I said, because we're so flexible with the packages that we offer, it just makes people feel a little bit more comfortable if they want to ask a question or if they want to bolt a package on or do Mm -hmm. something. They tend to be a lot freer in asking. Yeah, absolutely. If you've got those five star reviews, definitely something to see and shout about. Put them out there, put them all over social and let people know how reputable you are. One of the things that we are very, very proud of is all of the reviews that we've got. and, And we love all of our clients and we encourage it we bring some of them to car shows with us some of the cars that we've imported oh great car yeah shows. so we stay in touch with them still they send us photos when they modify things um we've got a tarbo's project page on facebook as well which is um a non-sales related just for people to put their cars on things that they're working on questions they may have passions yeah car means. yeah just you know just a nice community page so we encourage people to post things on there as well. And it, it is, the car community is massive and yeah. amazing. And that's what we try to bring through our agency. It's not a business, it's a community. Of course, really nice. Yeah, that's great. Where do you, I guess, finally then, where do you, where do you see Tarbo going in five years time? Oh, I mean... I don't know. Ruling the world. No, I don't know. Do you know? <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, you know, we again it you roll with the punches we the car market at the moment and with you know with COVID and things it has impacted us quite significantly especially with shipping yeah um a lot of the big boats have been delayed shipping prices have gone up quite substantially the car market is taking a little bit of a hit at the moment sure so again it's just another punch that we have to roll with so in five years time you know i'd like to envision us being in a bigger unit more clients bigger cars that kind of thing i think every agency probably has the same goals in mind um but at the moment it is just rolling with the punches until we get there taking each day as it comes as well yeah. just, <laughs> who we knows have, what's going to be we have our successes all the time but yeah. i think just the economy at the moment and we're not the only ones being affected by it oh actually. gosh yeah affecting everybody yeah. so apart from bp <laughs> Yeah, we can see it in our clients, we see it in our in our partners, we see it in the teams that we work with. So we are just, you know, trying to help each other out as much as we can. No, great. Fantastic. It sounds like it's like you, you said it and the word is community, but it sounds like you have got a really great community there with you. Oh, absolutely. Especially in Cornwall as well, you know, because it's so scenic. Yeah. Um, car meets, uh, you know, overlooking the beaches and things like that. And everybody brings their kids along. And yeah you know it's it is an amazing it is an amazing community and we we encourage anybody if they ever see a car meet happening on facebook even if you don't have a car to show go along yep. see the other cars talk to the people um they they love talking about yeah you know, what, they did to it, what they you know what what they did to it and didn't work when it caught on fire yeah um, so they're, they're such a friendly friendly community and again we try to reflect that in our business as best as we can we try to be really outgoing and forthcoming and yeah. make it more of a friendly service fantastic that's yeah definitely like you say you've got your reviews which which speak many a words so that's definitely being conveyed through your business so hats off to you Mm-hmm. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs>